absence at the vice presidential debate last Friday. I was there with the national chairman of a great party, the DG of our campaign, and many of us. But we didn't get the opportunity to participate. And we were told by the organizers born that they came up with the five political parties based on online polling and Facebook ratings. I am not here to castigate or blame anyone. The truth of the matter is that Nigerians were denied the opportunity to hear and evaluate the message of the All Progressives Drug Alliance Apple, our progressive movement and our progressive agenda, so as to give them a chance to truly evaluate what we are talking about as a clear alternative path to providing solutions to Nigeria's problems. At best, in my view, the online ratings and polling could have been just one in care. Just one. Because the All Progressive Zone Alliance is the third largest party in Nigeria. We produced government. One, Sunday. I work in a modern state of Anambra that is clearly track record of Abga on the ground in Nigeria. And anybody can go touch and feel and smell what's going on in Anambra State. Two, the All Progressives Run Alliance has at least 11 members of the National Assembly and scores of members of the House of Assembly or respective houses of assembly and councillors across the country. When you look at our registration and our spread, we're truly the third largest party. And so when you deny Nigerians the opportunity to hear our message, more so now, the situation is so critical. I'm not sure how fair that is. In any case, about three of the political parties that participated in the debate don't even have a councillor. Not one councillor. They run their presidential campaigns on media only, on social media. I'm not saying that that's not the way to go. But you gotta have structures on the ground and you gotta have human beings to vote and be voted for as structures to win an election. So again, I am sorry that we didn't have a chance to participate, but our message is so important, more so now than ever before, that it requires the opportunity for the people of this great country to evaluate our progressive agenda. So I'm not lamenting, and I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying that it was insufficient to have used one at best what in And then you. The, clearly, the debate would have been a lot more vibrant. And we've been out there to share our message of hope and prosperity. Having said that, I guess the organizers did the best they could. Uh, my view is that it could have been a lot more comprehensive. But having said that, ladies and gentlemen, let me open by some very important comments I'd like to make. Number one, I'm sure most of you listened to the debate. I was there. All we heard about were statistics about the economy, the bad news, about the economy, whether it was from a viewpoint of growth, GDP, stock.
stock market, infrastructure deficit, home management, whether it had to do with the challenge with the business of fighting corruption or the efforts being made in managing our scarce resources and the business of infrastructural challenges and the efforts of government to address them. We also heard about how the two big parties claim they will try to make things better. That's what we heard. But I asked Nigerians, did anybody really hear anything on Friday that really changed the situation on the ground? in any significant way as demanded by the current situation we're in. I ask, isn't it true that they were essentially rehashing the old policies that have failed over and over again? And what they were attempting to do was to present Nigerians with the better of the two evils. The one party led government for 16 years, and the other party is led government for about four years. Nothing changed. In fact, things are much worse. And I don't want to start to reel out the statistics. You know them all. Capital poverty, infrastructure deficit, runaway inflation, borrowings galore, indiscipline in spending, corruption, lack of vision, poor management coordination. We, we know. Because the only thing we, we now capture and captain is that our country has become the chairman of all failed indices. We failed in the economy, we failed in the healthcare sector, we failed in education, we failed in infrastructure and deficit and all that. We failed in economy management. And the world is rating us every which way down south, boom, on the ground. And it's only getting worse. So, I left the debate asking myself, what again did the one party that is a strong opposition roaring to go, really say they will do differently from the current government? I've been asking myself that. I'm turning the wheels. The same old policies. And nobody addressed the fundamental questions and the fundamental issues. You have to give President Buhari some credit. He's an honest man because he admitted only a couple of days ago that the economy has failed. Give him credit for honesty. Just like some members of his team told us a few days ago that Boko Haram was having an upper hand because they are now deploying drones to fight a military. You have to give them credit for telling the truth. That's the beginning. That's a good thing. I was asking, looking to see what the other party says they'll do differently. Except to talk about how they can manage the economy better. The All Progressives Drone Alliance has a different message. We believe, and it's abundantly clear, that what this country needs, and needs it now, 
is the commitment to restructure the foundation on which we have laid and their great country. I liken it to a house that is built on quick and shifting sand. It will not hold up over time. All you have to do is to put weight on it and it collapses over time right in front of you. I like it also, our great country, beloved country Nigeria, to a mother with many children who is so reluctant and in fact refuses to wean her children from breastfeeding. Because the mother is afraid that the children will grow to become independent and assertive and confident and somehow she loses control of her children. And so, she takes the tunnel vision view that the best way to keep her children under her reach is to continue to breastfeed. And yet the mother knows that even the breast milk is running out. And when you continue to breastfeed your children rather than win them, you lose the opportunity for them to stand on their feet, become confident, become productive, have initiative, become assertive, and become productive citizens and children that can bring value to the family. That's the best example I can give you. Because indeed, it is abundantly clear that the challenge of this country is that we, the country has not moved in the direction of fiscal restructuring. We've had long debates about political restructure. We heard them for years discussed at the National Assembly and the paralysis thereof. We know the requirement about constitutional amendment. We are clear on that. But I got news for you. Unless we fiscally restructure, we may not have a country much longer. by fiscal restructure. We know what it means. We say, and this is a progressive message, the progressive message of all our great party, after all progressives are alive, is that we must find courage to move in the direction of evolving geographic entities that are economically viable, competitive, and sustainable. So that these entities can focus on what they do best. So we can open the doors and windows of our economic opportunities for people and create wealth and prosperity. That's the crux of the matter. We have abundant mineral and human resources. We have great capacity in this great land. Nigerians all over the world are the key players in the economies of the global economy. In institutions, in companies, successful all over the world. So the problem is not our people. Are the people of Nigeria are great people. But when they choke hold with a structure that is putting so much weight on our people and not giving us a chance to grow our economy and come out of poverty. 
Nigeria has no business with poverty. The All Progressives Run Alliance message is fighting poverty to a standstill because this great country and the people of Nigeria have no business with poverty. We are blessed in huge natural and human resources. An example. We're sitting here in Abuja. Anywhere else in the world, Abuja will be the economic capital for the production of building materials, floor tiles, granite, and marble, employing thousands and thousands of people and factories booming and shipping building materials all over the world. It's not happening. I put a sales back and wait for a location from the sale of crude oil. Because all that is on the ground and under the ground is under control of federal government. I only give you that example because this is what abounds across Nigeria. Huge opportunities in mineral resources and work. Totally untapped. Because we created a structure and we're forcing ourselves on a structure that has been imposed on us by the 1999 constitution of the military that has brought us to our knees. Our people are not able to deploy our God-given talent with the natural resources and opportunities God, our great God gave this country to expand our economy, grow opportunities for our people, and create economic well-being and prosperity. The truth of the matter is that a few politicians are dividing this country on the basis of race, of, of religion and tribe and state of origin. It's unfortunate because Nigerian strength is truly in its adverse in diversity. Our strength is in our diversity. And those who exploit it to divide us are doing great disservice to this country. Our common enemy is poverty, and poverty we can overcome. If we only courageously stand up to the reality that we must do something very differently in our best interest in the generations of Nigerians to come. Now, I ask you, what is the difficulty with moving in the direction of addressing this very urgent need to restructure the basis on which we live in Nigeria in the material and economic interest of our people? What are we afraid of? Resource control? We are afraid of resource control? Is it because we're afraid of state police and security, local security? The problem is we need to rise up as a people with the necessary courage to do what's best for us. Let these entities focus on what they do best and the conversation must be that they bring value to the center on agreed terms to work and sustain foreign affairs and defense. That is how nations grow. How can you have a whole country talking about how they are going to run an economic system based largely on the proceeds from sale of good oil? All accruing to the center and then divvy it up. The truth of the matter is that those who set up the system, particularly the 1999 constitution, based it on a sharing formula. It was largely about sharing proceeds from the sale of crude. The progressive message of our great party 
is that we reverse that and move in the direction of productivity and baking the cake rather than sharing the cake. Because there's not much cake to be shared now, more so in the very near future. That's why I gave you the example of a mother who is reluctant and refuses to wean her children, continues to breastfeed them when they are overdue because she's afraid that the children may become independent and assertive and productive and maybe more successful than her and her husband. Mm. Yes, so I'm almost there, relax. So, just please, so, so the issue there is, the issue please, is that our country must find the courage to address restructure, fiscal restructure, economic entities that must now be productive. Okay. The other point I want to make, and this is important, is that as we are now prepared to have that conversation, what the All Progressive Run Alliance stands for, if we are voted into office in 2019, would be to take some immediate steps to begin to remedy the situation. And the first step we will take will be a commitment to a 5% minimum, 5% minimum reduction in the cost of governance. Every year, 5% minimum reduction in the cost of governance every year, driven by the federal government. We will engage with states and local governments and all entities of government to say, we want, and we are going to insist that we come together in the interest of this country to reduce the cost of governance by at least 5% a year for the next four years. And we shall domicile such savings and deploy them in critical infrastructure, health care, and quality education and housing. So our people, the people of Nigeria, will start to get some relief and launch our fight against poverty. That's the first step we'll take. The second step, step that we're going to take is, again, a federal government initiative to bring the states in all current geopolitical zones and turn them into geoeconomic zones with federal government matching funds and support of the CBN, the private sector, and foreign investors. To say, look, throw resources into a pot, and the federal government shall bring matching funds, and each zone, economic zone, shall begin to look at what specifically in each zone it can jointly do to empower the economy, particularly in the areas of power supply and infrastructure. Power supply, key part of infrastructure, roads and, and rail, rail lines, schools and hospitals, agriculture. What is it that each economic zone can do best? Rather than states throwing money at projects on their own, many of them uncompleted, many of them elephant, and we never get to impact the lives of our people. Why don't we save money? and bring resources together, and the federal government will help drive it with the support of foreign investment and the private sector to zero in on what those economic zones can best complete and bring value to the sector. That we can start to do without a constitutional amendment. It will be a critical way to begin the fight back against poverty because we'll create millions of jobs, particularly for young people and women. No central can focus on education and agriculture. The Southeast can focus on dry ports and infrastructure, such as power supply, rail lines, and dry ports. All these statistics will come together because once you engage in fighting poverty and you focus on the right structure, the economy opens up in terms of those and windows. That would be a critical step that we should take. And the next step we shall take immediately will be in the area of security, because that's where I close for now. Look, we know what is happening with security. We're under real threat. 
So we are facing poverty as an existential threat, and then we are facing insurgency as another <laughs> existential threat. Our view is quite straightforward when it comes to security. The gallant men and women we have in the armed forces are doing the very best they can under the circumstances. We divided nation. We know that more than anything else, Nigerians are fighting over scarce resources to be able to survive. It's poverty that is causing all of this. And we say, our government is prepared to engage the services of military contractors for a short period of time. Let them bring the equipment and tools and train men and women to fight alongside our armed forces to attack insurgency. You can see where we are. Our president was clear a few days ago. The man threw his hands up in the air and said, I need to have an emergency meeting with the child basin because the Boko Haram threat is getting out of control. That's basically what he was saying. Because even our own military bases are being overrun. Every day we're incurring heavy losses. We need to do something different. Our men and women in the armed forces, as great a job there as, as they are doing, is not enough because they are ill-equipped, their motivation level is low. Look at the monies we invested in hardware. Even the one to, to the US, the aircraft will be ready until 2023, we are told. So what's going to happen between now and then? But if we invest in military contractors now, they will come